This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. It's written on Moshe Rabbeinu, the main rabbi of our nation, the main prophet of all generations. He is that one that was able to recognize and to see the Creator in the highest and most open way of them all, of all the rest of the Prophets. And Moshe Rabbeinu that righteous man he was not a simple person he was not a simple person not because of the nature of his creation because how Hashem made him to be he was a person that was always putting into his mind to search for the truth when he was born he born in Egypt and he been adopted and took care of by the princess Batya, the daughter of Pharaoh. So he grew up as a grandson of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. He was a wealthy kid with all of the luxuries. He had everything. But he had a feeling that something is wrong. And he wanted to search all of the time for the truth. So he investigated and then he realized that he belongs to the Jewish nation that were working and being abused as slaves under the kingship of Pharaoh and Egypt of those ancient days. So when he realized that, so all of that wealth of that kingship that he was belonged to wasn't interesting for him at all anymore. He was not after that wealth and the pleasures and, and all the things, the luxuries that were offered to him. So he was going out every day from the palace to all of those working zones, to the desert, to the places that his brothers were working over there. And he was lifting the stones and the sacks and the sand and the mud and working with his brothers removing the labor from their shoulders and carrying them, carrying with them, helping them. The Midrashim, the ancient scripts that we have that are telling us what happened in those ancient days are describing Moshe as a person that would steal from the, from, from the palace band-aids and, and all kinds of medicines and he would bring it to his wounded brothers and he was covering and healing their wounds and their scratches and he cared about them. And he was always trying to, to talk to their guards, to the officers over there and, and as much as he could. Until one day when he was 20 years old he saw one of the Egyptian soldiers that is beating one of his brothers, one of the Jewish nation, the Jewish people. So he got into that fight to protect his brother not to be killed for no reason by that cruel officer. And he found himself killing that officer while trying to protect his brother. And then there was in that generation there was a decree that every person that killed another one will be executed on that crime. So he knew for sure that he will die. So he ran away. He ran to the desert. And in the desert he walked with no water, he was not prepared for the desert, he didn't took no equipment, no food, no bag with him, just him and his pair of sandals barely to his feet. And ran into the unknown, to the desert. And over there, he came to the desert, he found himself in front of the camp of Yitro, Jethro, I think that's how you call him, but his name was Yitro. And Yitro, he was one of the ministers of Pharaoh. So he realized that something wrong is happening here. And he knew that if he will help that person out, 
he will be executed. He will be blamed on betrayed, helping the person that is a, a prisoner that is running away from trial. So he took him and threw him down to a pit, to a prison that he had. And for 10 years Moshe Rabbeinu was in that pit, underground. And Tzipora, that in the future will become the wife of Moshe, of Moses, she was coming every day and bring and 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 taking down feeding him giving him a cup of water a little bit of water and a little bit of bread and for 10 years moshe was in that cell was underground until he was 30. when he was 30 years old Zipporah went to her father to itro and she asked him do you remember that person that you threw to prison to that pit to that dark hole 10 years ago so I asked her, is he still alive? She said, yes, and every day he's praying for you. Moshe Rabbeinu saw a good point in Yitro, and he cared about him, and for 10 years he was praying for that person that threw him to prison. For 10 years he was praying for him to wake up, to understand the truth. So Yitro ran and opened that prison and set Moshe free. And he starts speaking with him and he saw that that's not a regular person, that's a real righteous man. For another 50 years Moshe Rabbeinu was running and working for Yitro. He got married with Tzipora and he was the shepherd of that herd of, of sheep and goats of, of Yitro. And every day he would go and for 50 years he was praying on the redemption of our nation, of Am Yisrael, to be redeemed from their exile, from their punishment, from being slaves to Pharaoh and to the kingship of Egypt. For 50 years he was praying to the sky and not being answered at all. Only when Moshe was 80 years old, the Creator revealed himself to him in that holy mountain, Mount Sinai in a cave that's in the bottom of Mount Sinai and in that cave the Creator revealed himself to him in his first prophecy only when he was 80. 50 years he's in prison after another 50 years he's in the desert after 10 years that he is in prison drinking water and eating small amounts of bread after running away from all of his wealth and if guaranteed success in the palace of Pharaoh. He could inherit half of the kingship or all of it, who knows. And he chose to go after his heart, to go after the truth, against all rules, against all logic, without considering people's opinion, without listening and consulting, just running toward the truth like a flame of fire in a field of thorns, not afraid from death, not afraid from poverty, not afraid from sorrow, not afraid from loneliness, from nothing at all. Just praying and praying and if Hashem will answer, He will answer. If Hashem will not gonna answer, it's not going to move Moshe Rabbeinu from His truth. After many years that He already went back to Egypt and He redeemed His people and Hashem made all the wonders and now they're receiving the Torah and Mount Sinai and everyone are celebrating and suddenly people started dancing with the golden calf. There was a horrible decree and Hashem was angry in a way. The Creator decided to punish His nation and thousands of people start coming, falling down on, on the ground and dying one after the other. Moshe Rabbeinu ran up to Mount Sinai and he's calling Hashem and he went into the fire. Those boulders, huge rocks were falling from Mount Sinai all of the time that people won't be able to come closer because of the holiness of that place. And Moshe Rabbeinu is walking into the fire. Into the flaming fire he's running without looking to the sides, not being afraid, not from those boulders, from thunders, from, from lightnings, from nothing. Because he was focused in his purpose. He had something in mind. And he went up again to Mount Sinai with no bread, with no water, not prepared at all. 
And for 40 days he is crying and talking and praying and arguing with the Creator, not drinking a sip of water, not biting one small crumb of bread. The verses are testifying on Moshe that for 40 days he was awake and arguing and fighting and crying and screaming and convinc convincing and bringing more claims and arguments and doing whatever he can more than his power to bring forgiveness to his people because he knows the will of the Creator in a deeper way even than the way that the Creator is expressing himself to us it's true the Creator gave us the Torah he gave us the verses he gave us the parshiot he gave us also the righteous people that were interpreting and explaining and opening all of those verses and the Torah Shebaal Peh, the wisdom that had been given to us by the righteous people from one generation to the next. It's all written today. It's true. But there is much more to learn. Much more is written between the lines than what that is written inside the lines. The white fire that is holding the dark fire, the black fire, is much holier and deeper than that black fire. The black fire, the, those are the holy letters of the Torah, the holy explanations of the commandments, of our obligations, of the rules, are still limited. They're limited in numbers and in shapes. But they are sitting, hovering, above a flaming white fire. What is that fire? How can we take our buckets of that holy fire and to drink from that water of Torah? This is the Torah that is coming out from your inner spring, from your holy soul. Your holy soul is connected and channeled and wired to the endless sea of wisdom and that is the white fire of the Torah. From that fire, from the wisdom of your own soul, from the wisdom of their soul, the righteous people revealed their wisdom along the generations. One after the other composed and wrote another book and delivered another message and another wisdom. Where they got that from? Not only from the verses, from their inner wisdom, from that endless fire that is flaming inside of your heart. Your holy heart is attached to the Creator Himself, to the source of wisdom, to the endless spring. And from that place you can bring out rivers of wisdom, of conclusions, of advice. But you need to aim your heart to the real purpose. To the will of all will. And that's what that is written on Moshe Rabbeinu. That when he passed away, it was Shabbos, the seventh day, afternoon, time that calls Ra'ava de Ra'avin. The meaning of those words Ra'ava de Ra'avin is the will of all wills. That his will was the strongest will of them all. And then, he been united with the Creator. When he wanted the Creator with all of his heart. The numeral value of the word Moshe is 345. The numeral value of one number above Moshe, 346 is equal to the word Ratzon, will. One level above Moshe is his desire, his holy desire to know Hashem. 344, one level under Moshe, is equal to the word Shmad, complete destruction, losing your faith completely. For Moshe, He's standing between his success, what's his success? To want Hashem with all of his heart. Not to finish seven pages of Gemara every day, or to learn all the Shulchan Aruch, or to run to the synagogue early in the morning. That's not his success. His success is to do those things with the heart. 
His success is that his heart will desire the Creator, not to go to the synagogue out of habit, to sit and learn the, the page of the day because that he must or because that it's convenient or comfortable for him. That's not his will at all. When he doesn't want Hashem, he feels that he's falling from his level to complete destruction. When he finds himself sitting in front of the books and he's bored and he cannot focus and he doesn't care about the learning, he feels like he's losing his mind. What in the world am I doing here? That's not the purpose of my creation. I need to want Hashem. Ve'ahavta, to love Hashem. Bechol levavcha, with all of your heart. Bechol nafshecha, with all of your spirit. Uvchol meodecha, and with everything you got. Everything that you received from Hashem, you need to use. He gave you talents. He gave you abilities. He gave you wisdom. He gave you power. Wisdom, advice, money, everything you got from the Creator must be used. You must throw it into Avodat Hashem, to serve Hashem with it. If you have the ability to go and talk to people, you're not allowed to sit and be quiet. If you have the ability to create amazing, inspiring videos and to edit and to, to collect mm, pictures and, and, and to inspire people to serve Hashem, you must do that. If you have the wisdom to know how to help in other ways, you must use your talents. If it's to build websites, if it's to compose, if it's to write books, if it's to create music and to, and to illustrate books and to do whatever, you need to use those treasures that the Creator gave you for the purpose of His creation. Now what the purpose is, you need to search and find the truth inside of you. Maybe our purpose gonna meet in the future. Maybe one day our understanding gonna meet someday. But as for now, let's say that you're married, you have your family, you have your children, it's part of your purpose. Your family are not holding you back from serving the Creator. To serve the Creator, it's to build your family that everyone around you will be happy and strong. That's part of your effort that is needed and required and expected from you. If now you have friends in your neighborhood and they're all so far from faith, they couldn't care less about synagogues and tefillin and Shabbos, you need to find a way, not how to drag them to Beit HaMidrash, to the synagogue, to convince them to learn Torah, how to touch their hearts, that they will start seeking for themselves. You won't be there forever for them. You need to light that flame inside of their hearts, that they will go and seek by themselves. I was learning in a certain yeshiva, the rabbi of that yeshiva was able to let that fire inside of me for the time that I was sitting in his yeshiva. In the moment that I realized that I need to go and do other things outside in the world, that's where my responsibility took place in my life. If I would want to fall and give up and say, that's it, I don't want to do anymore, he and thousands like him wouldn't be able to drag me back. If I lost my will, no one can save me. But if I want the truth, no one in the world will be able to stop me, even if I will be out of the Beit Midrash, even if I will fall and fail in the most filthiest failures in the world, even if I'm going to reach rock bottom, I will steer back up and will start climbing again, because that is my will. There is nothing that can stop you from wanting if you want something, that's the success. It's the success of Moshe Rabbeinu, not because that he was a genius. Moshe is coming to open our eyes to understand the truth. Every single one of us needs to learn that the will is the highest and most important thing that we have in our life. And we need to increase our will, to purify our will, that we will want only good things. That only closeness to the Creator will be good for us. We need to work on ourselves to want Hashem. And if you're looking at the mirror, you're checking yourself and you see, I'd rather have burgers now. What can you do? I have an opportunity to serve. 
and have an opportunity for burgers? <laughs> and the answer is clear. <coughs> so you need to work on your will that you will want to want. That you will want to want Hashem. Because sometimes you don't want. You rather to eat burgers. And it's okay, because that's your level. It's not a shame. It's reality. We're seeking for the truth. We don't want honor and respect and that people will tell us, Oh, you're so righteous. We really want to purify ourselves and to become righteous. We don't want to be called righteous. That's not important. We really want to climb to those high levels that we won't care about this world at all. And the things in this world won't distract our thoughts from the purpose. We want to want it. So we should be sincere and honest about ourselves and to open our hearts and our mouths and to talk to the Creator from an honest and sincere place, to share and to say the truth to the Creator, to tell Him, Father, I have such a war and I'm embarrassed to say, but burgers, I don't know where you came up with that invention, I don't know what to do. Every burger shop, I'm losing my mind. Every ice cream store, I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind. This world is so colorful and beautiful and so attempting and I don't know what to do. I'm handcuffed to this world. You tied me to all those lusts and desires, confusing me. Movies, theaters, views, porches, b branches, houses, forests, parks, lakes. I'm lost. What I'm going to do, Hashem? Help me to want you. When you're going to say to Hashem, Hashem, the truth is that I'm still far from you. I don't really want you. Please help me to want you more. That will be an honest prayer. That will be a prayer of truth. And a prayer of truth will be accepted. If you will stand with all of your lusts and desires that you know how confused you are and how far you are and you will stand in front of the king of all kings and going to start telling him I want to be righteous, I want to be pure, I want to learn Gemara all day long, I don't care about this world at all Hashem, please clean me, please take me, that I'm going to succeed, that my family won't distract my thoughts, that you're lying. All of that fantastic lie was just a lie that you built inside of your own twisted mind that you're lying to yourself on daily basis, not dealing with your own weaknesses because if your family will go to a vacation and you're going to find yourself alone in the house, I promise you, you're not going to learn. It's going to take you maximum 23 minutes to close the book. You're not going to learn. You're not going to pray longer. You're not going to go every day to the mikveh. You're not. You're not. Because it's not your level. And it's not your family's fault. And not your friends. It's your reality. It's your level. And it's okay. That's what you need to work on. When you're going to work on yourself, the light will shine from your inside and will illuminate and will wash the rest of your beloved ones, all of the circles that are surrounding you, will enjoy from your development. But as long as you're lying to yourself about your condition, and about your spiritual level, and you're just pretending to hold in a high level, and being frustrated from the fact that you cannot learn, if you would really want to learn, you would learn. You would walk all day long with a book in your pocket and in every opportunity you would open that book like that you do with your iPhone and your Facebook and your YouTube and your channels. Why? Because that's your desire. That's where your mind is at. And it's okay if you will be honest about it. If you will say to Hashem Barach, what in the world are you doing? Why you gave me that cursed device? I don't know how to get rid of it. It's like a leech attached to my hand. I don't know what to do, Ribbon I can't put it down. I'm putting it and it's, it's glued to my hand. <laughs> Nothing. If you will be honest to open your heart and to express your thoughts, those will be the prayers that will be answered. A person that is lying to Hashem cannot stand in front of Him. It means that when you are praying prayers of false, of lies, those prayers won't be accepted. When you're going to say, Hashem, I want to be righteous. 
I want to close my eyes from this world. I don't want to taste no taste from this world. Those won't be the prayers that are going to be answered. Because you never stood in front of Hashem and asked those requests. Because when you were asking for those requests, you were not in front of Hashem because you were lying. Because you were not expressing your real will. You were just um, um, pretending. You were pretending to hold in a certain level. You were just screaming because you didn't want to deal with your real problems, with your real weaknesses, with your real lusts and desires, with your embarrassments, with your weaknesses. But when you're going to go with a broken heart in front of the King of all Kings, and you're going to tell Him the truth, Hashem, the truth is that I'm a liar. And I'm lying to you on daily basis. And I'm lying to myself. I'm pretending to be holy. I'm pretending to be righteous. I'm pretending to be pure. I'm pretending to be an angel. I want people to respect me. I want people to love me. I'm trying that people are going to like me. And that's my truth. That I'm a fake person. That I'm lying to myself on daily basis and I'm lying to my wife, lying to my children, lying to all of my family, to my students, to all of my beloved ones. Now please can you help me because I cannot help myself. That will be a prayer that will be answered. A prayer like that, that is coming out from an honest, might be broken, but an honest heart is a prayer of truth. And Hashem is close to everyone, to everyone that will call Him with truth. So then you prayed really your prayer in front of the King of all Kings, and your prayer will be answered. So it's worthy to pray from a broken heart, to stand and to admit, to say, I'm weak. I'm so confused, Hashem. I don't know. And why are we afraid to have that sincere and honest prayer? I'll tell you. Because we're afraid to be judged. We're afraid to feel that embarrassment of being in a low place, not because that it's really painful to be in a low place. The truth is that after you express your emotions and you admit in your failures, you feel relief. It makes you feel better with yourself. So why are we so scared to do that? Because that we've been judged and criticized by others for many, many years of our lives, and possibly also today, and the environment is very judgmental and destroying our self-esteem all of the time, and we feel that we don't want to experience that emotional pain of being judged again. But the truth is that when you're going to judge yourself in front of a good friend, he won't be judgmental about what that you're going to tell him. He will accept you. That's why he's a good friend. When you're really going to share your heart in front of the king of the creator, he won't be angry or upset at you. He will hug you. His tears of feeling with you, your sorrow and your pain, will heal your wounds will bring back the warmth and trust into your life. But we're afraid of exposing ourselves because we've been hurt so many times in our life. But we must dare again to be people of truth and to be who that we are no matter what will happen because of that. To be sincere and honest and to share of our real thoughts. And that real honest conversa conversation will set our, us free. And not only that, also going to heal all of our wounds and scratches. Because when you open yourself, you open those dark places that never been discussed, that never been opened before, that never been washed, never been purified yet. And now when you're opening them, and you're opening it in a, in a holy place, in front of the Creator, in a positive environment, when the Creator, your Father of Mercy, is with you, you're opening a way for pure water to heal your wounds, of light to illuminate your own darkness. And then the night will illuminate like the day, 
and you will be able to deal with your lackings and your fears and your anxieties. You will be able to be who that you are with no shame. Even if you will stay in the same level, you will be able to say the truth about yourself. Yes, I am lazy. Yes, I was lying. Yes, I was not worthy. Yes, I, I did whatever I did. When you will be able to connect yourself to your true self with truth, then the Creator will be with you in every point of your being. He won't be far from you anymore. He is far from us only because that we are lying about our condition. In the moment that you're doing tshuva, that you're coming back to who that you are and you're admitting and you're expressing your thoughts with truth, Hashem atones, Hashem brings forgiveness, Hashem erases all the sins. Moshe Rabbeinu, he knew that. That's why he was able to go and to climb on Mount Sinai and to call Hashem for 40 days and 40 night, nights. Because he knew that the Creator is listening to his prayer. So he couldn't care less until when he's going to pray. He didn't know that Hashem will answer after 40 days. If Hashem wouldn't answer after 40 days, Moshe would continue. 41, 42, 43. He couldn't care less. He was there to say the truth. Hashem, you want to forgive. Hashem, you don't want us to be killed. You want us to live. But in the verses it's written that everyone that is worshipping idols should be executed. So Moshe, why are you protecting those sinners? Let them die. It's the punishment for their sin. Moshe, he knows. The divine will of the Creator is even higher than what that is written in the verses. Even though that the verses are saying that you should kill, even if those verses came out from the holy mouth of the Creator Himself, He knows that the Father that is punishing His children, in His heart He feels the sorrow of their tears, and He cannot stand their pain, and He wants them to be healed, and He doesn't know what to do with Himself, even though that He is the Creator. When you see your children fighting and hitting each other, you lose your mind, you don't know what to do. To do and that's exactly what that happens with our Father in heaven when we, when we are fighting, when He sees us arguing and lying and scamming and doing things behind the back and cheating each other and stealing from each other and doing horrible things. The Creator is sitting and He don't know how to find an advice for Himself. And He's sending His righteous people and messengers and wisdom to the world. And people are not learning. And the Creator is sitting and losing His mind out of the sorrow and pain of His creations. And He feels the sorrow and the loss and the despair of every individual. And He's crying, Bamistarim, in the hidden place, Tivken Afshi, the Creator is crying. He says to us, My spirit is crying, and His tears are falling down to the ocean. With tearing eyes, He's screaming and calling three times every night, roaring like a lion that lost His family, that lost His children to the darkness of the exile. When it's written, Rachamecha Rabim Hashem, there are two ways to explain that verse. Rachamecha Rabim Hashem, your mercy are great, Hashem. There are two ways to explain. One, you're merciful, you're great, you're amazing, you reveal your mercy. The second way is much deeper. There are huge mercy on you, Hashem. Rachamecha, the mercy on you are great, Hashem. We need to cry on the father more than we should cry on the children. When there is a mother and her child is 40 and he's not married, yes, he's upset, he's sad, he's not happy. But the mother, she doesn't eat and she doesn't drink and she cannot enjoy no television show and she doesn't have no friends and she cannot express her sorrow. 
She's dead from inside. Her son is not married. And he is okay. <laughs> he's dating, he's going, he's smoking, he's drinking, he's coming and going back. He was in Israel for two years. It's okay, you know, working on it. She's in a different place because she's got more wisdom. When the Creator fills our sorrow, He fills our sorrow with no distractions. When you have your poverty, when you're upset, when you're down, you have your outlets. After a while you find a solution. You have that magnificent mobile that is helping you always to forget everything and to drown in YouTube, in new clips. Oh, Rabbi Kasuto, amazing opportunities to forget about your sorrow. But the Creator, He doesn't have nothing in His world except of His children. When He sees that you're distracting your thoughts from your, from your pain, He feels the sorrow of your distraction. He feels the fear from what will happen with you in the future if you're not going to work on yourself. And when He sees that you're going and disappearing into your sadness and to your darkness, so he doesn't know what to do with himself. So he's screaming. And where is he screaming to? What is that place that he's screaming to? Where is his shofar ends? In your heart. If you're going to listen to your heart, you're going to hear the scream of Hashem. You're going to hear Hashem calling you from inside. When you're waking up and you start searching for Hashem in your life and you say, hey, you know what? There is a Creator. I think I can feel it. It's because that someone called you from inside. That someone pinched you from inside. That someone whispered to you from inside. It aruta dil'ela, the wake up that we feel from above in our mind, oh, I think, oh, I realized, oh, it just hit me, it came to me right now. This is a result of it aruta diltata, of a certain um, awakeness that started from the bottom, from inside, from within. That the Creator is calling you from your heart. The verse is saying, lecha amar libi, your heart is telling you, your heart that is my messenger, he told you, Bakshupa night amid, ask for my face always. Your heart is whispering to you all of the time, look for the face of Hashem, look for the face of Hashem, look for the face of Hashem, look for the face of Hashem. When you're eating, your heart is telling you that there is more to it. When you're watching a movie, Hashem is whispering. Your heart is telling you that this movie holds more information. There is something deeper in that message. It's not only actors. Something is written between the lines. When you're reading a parasha, when you go to a class, you feel that there is more to it. What is that more? This is that white fire. This is that endless wisdom that is speaking from between the lines. It's the light of your soul that is screaming from within. To work on ourselves to develop self-awareness. <coughs> to find the voice of our hearts. It's to find the Creator in our lives. It's to find the one that said and created the world. The one that it is in His hand to provide us all of our needs. To answer all of our prayers. To give us everything we wish and we hope for. It's in His power. And He's not hidden. He's just inside. And if you're not going to find Him inside, you will never going to find Him in the path of truth, in the right way. If for you, Hashem will be an external creator. Oh, He's in the books. So when someone will take the book from you, you won't have Hashem anymore. That's not the real Creator. If for you Hashem is speaking through that amazing Rabbi, when that Rabbi will disappear from your eyes, you lost the connection to the Creator. That's not the right path. Even if you're receiving diamonds from those books or from those righteous people that are around you, it's not a complete way. They're just coming to hint you to find the Creator in your inside. 
They're guiding you. They're sharing from their life experience to tell you, hey, we found Hashem, means that Hashem is exist. Not that we found Him and we own Him and we can possess. No. He's inside of you. That's what I'm coming to teach you. That you should find Him inside of your own heart, not inside of my heart. Inside of my heart, it's my mission. Inside of your heart, it's your mission. You have your mission to find Hashem in your life. And then even when you cannot learn, you still will be with Hashem like King David in the desert. Even chased by your own brothers, siblings, sisters, family, running for your life, you will run toward Hashem. You will be able to feel the closeness of the Creator even in the hardest hours of them all. And that's the purpose of creation, that we will connect and glue ourselves to the Creator completely. That we will experience Hashem's existence in front of our face 24-7, every moment of our lives, that we will be attached to Him. That we won't move from Him a breath of a hair. That Him and us will become one. It depends in your will. It depends in your holy desire to connect yourself to Him with ropes of love, passion, flaming fire that rise from within, from your pure heart that is thirsty to hear more wisdom on how I'm going to connect myself to Hashem, how I'm going to recognize His face, if I'm up, if I'm down, if I'm working, if I'm not, if I'm married, if I'm not, if I have children, if I don't, if I have money, if I don't, if I'm satisfied or if I'm hungry. In every situation, in all of your ways, you need to know Him, that He's with you. He lives inside of you. And you can enjoy His being. You can enjoy a friend like Him. Tov Hashem lakol. Hashem is good for everything you need. Tov Hashem lirfua. Hashem is good for healing. Hashem is good for shiduchim to help you to find your soulmate. Hashem is good to buy houses, properties, for investments. Hashem is the best friend for inv investments. Hashem is your partner. Hashem is your life. Hashem is with you in every path, in every way you walk. But you need to attach yourself to Him in your holy thoughts. Not to separate yourself from Him even for a moment. How you separate yourself from Him? Like we said, when you start lying to yourself. When you start pretending to yourself that you're holding in a certain level. Oh, I'm rich. I don't need Hashem. No, me, myself, I'm a doctor. I don't need Hashem. No, me, myself, I'm religious. I don't need Hashem. That's the biggest joke of them all. I'm religious. I'm an FFB, fake from birth, from, from birth. That's the biggest joke of them all. You're fake from birth. You're not from. You're not attached. You're stuck in prison, in a religion prison. That's it. You have tradition. Handcuffed. You don't have the flaming fire of a holy desire to serve Hashem, to listen to His words, to understand His message. You're in, you're in the exile. With beard, with peot. Your, your prisoners, your, your officers didn't cut your peot, didn't cut your beard. Okay, didn't shave you. You're not in Auschwitz. Okay, great. It doesn't mean that you're not in prison. You can be in prison in Masha'arim, in the most religious neighborhood in Jerusalem, and you will be in prison of exile, of lust and desires and angers and hatred and, and jealousy, all kinds of bad attributes. And you have a long white beard and a yellow mustache from cigarettes <laughs> all day long in the Beit Midrash learning more. Disgusting. It's not the truth. That's not the truth of Hashem. The truth of Hashem is that you will be holy. That you will be a torch of fire. Flaming fire, searching. Hashem, what do you want from me? What can I do for you, Hashem? 
Now you need to go undercover. You wear your jeans. You go. You sell people. You go in the streets. You go into clubs, into discotheques, into parties. You go. You mingle. You speak with people. You whisper, Hey, brother, Hashem is with you. Everything is cool. Everything is okay. I'm with you. I'll pray for you. Come, let's go. I'll show you something. You ever did in a spring, in a well? You know what that? Come, I'll show you. Let's go. You did it, but the dude, come, my brother. I'll show you. Oh, there is a creator. This was the job, the effort, the work of Avraham. This is what he was doing. He was running into the city and he was screaming all over the town to everyone. Everyone thought he's crazy. He was holding something in his hand and he was telling, Hey, I got the key. I got the key. I got the answer. I got the answer. And he's running and knocking on doors and throwing baskets on people, kicking wagons, knocking on, on, on breaking windows. Hey, I got the key, I got the key. And he's running out to from the city. And everyone are saying, wow, look at that crazy person. What is he doing? But the strong ones, the thirstiest ones, the ones that are looking for the key, that are looking for the answer for their life, domestic problems, started running after him into the forest. And then when he would come to that empty space, to that quiet place, the Midrash is saying that he would stand and when everyone would come and surrounding him, he would tell them, sit. Now we'll tell you the key. I'll tell you the secret for your success. And he was telling them that there is a creator to the world and that the world filled with Hashem. That there is no spot without the creator's ex existence and that you can find him while you eat and while you drink, and while you think, he's in your thoughts. He's talking to you from inside. That was our first man, our leader. And he got married with Sarah. And he was converting the men, and she was converting the women. They were giving classes. They were going and talking. And the wide world became their children. And they became the head of the believers. And all the faith that people have today is based on their faith. On the foundation of what did they search and found by themselves. Searching, investigating, checking in the nights, looking at the stars, in the morning, looking at the sun, thinking what's going on in this creation. What's the secret? What's the key? In the end, they found it. And then they went to share that key. They went to share that wisdom with the rest of the human beings, with the wide world. That's our mission. That's who that we are. We need to take that key that we received from heaven and not to think that it belongs to us. To understand that it's the key to the hearts of our beloved ones. To offer them that key. To be a role model to our friends, to our people, to present the truth that you believe in, in the brightest and most pleasant light, to share and to offer, to be generous and kind, not to force and not to blame and judge the people that are not holding in your level. Because when you are starting to be hard on other people, the Creator is showing to you exactly how it feels to be under. And you start failing and <coughs> falling from your level. And the Creator is a very good wake-up call. He wakes you up all of the time to search for Him. So search for Him through your love, through your hearts. And be honest in your prayers and your prayers will be answered. Practically. 10 minutes, 15 minutes every day. Stand or sit in a quiet, comfortable place and express your thoughts, your emotions, your will, your holy desires. Share your pain. Share your fears. Tell Hashem everything you have in your heart. Ask for help. Ask for guidance. Ask for advice. And you will find it when you will ask for it with truth. Don't be shy in front of the King of all kings. He's with you anyway in those darkest hours. He was there when you failed. 
He was the one that was hugging you even if you were not sure if you're alone or not. You were not alone. You might felt alone, but you were not alone. He was there. He is you and He is in your heart. He is the life spirit inside of your heart, in your mind. He is the voice of your thoughts. He is your passions and your desires. He is your systems, your senses, your nerves. He is everything and there is nothing except of Him. May Hashem bless you that you will believe in yourselves to understand your importance and your greatness and that you will pray with confidence to the one that loves you and unconditional love and that all of your prayers and requests will be answered. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Emuna Project Inc. is a non-profit organization. We are tearing the world to pieces. <laughs> That's what we're doing. We're going from one land to the other, from one state to the other, knocking on doors, showing the key for success to all of our beloved ones. Please help us, support our, our organization through our website, emuna.com. Visit all of our social media outlets, Facebook, YouTube, WhatsApp we have, and what else? Twitter, Instagram. SoundCloud, Instagram, everything. We're all over the place, thank God. We and Kenny Smith. Hashem will bless you from the bottom of my heart. I'm blessing you to succeed, and you will see wonders in your life. Amen. Kenny, thank you very much. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.